organization as it will ultimately reward them in return. Today's webinar focuses on the criteria for journal selection for publication and the quality aspects which are associated with the scientific paper publication. The speaker for today's webinar is Mrs. Sukruti Kolgur, Assistant Professor, Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, TCET. We also have with us Dr. Vineet Kumar Dongri as our moderator. He is a professor in Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, TCET, and is also the Activity Head of Publication and Intellectual Property Creation Team. With this, I would now like to hand over the session to Sukriti ma'am. Over to you ma'am. Uh, thank you Ashwini. Uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, let me start my screen share. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So good afternoon, and I welcome you all to this uh, webinar. The topic for today's session is uh, journal selection criteria for publication and quality aspects in scientific paper publication. Why do we publish? First of all, we need to understand that publication uh, or publishing our scientific work is a process necessary in scientific research process. It is also necessary for graduation, for your career progression. And it also gives you the copyright for that particular work which you already, which you are trying to publish. What to publish? Any new results that you have achieved, a new methods that you have invented, a particular process for that you have invented a new new steps or you want to incorporate new material in any device so if you have all these things you have done research on all these things you can publish that if you have some reviews or summaries uh, for a wide area of research uh, in that you have listed all the methods uh, for a particular process you have listed all the different ways of finding out the value of a particular parameter. So when you combine all these things together, we call it as a summary or review of one particular topic. So if you have that, you can publish that. Or you can have manuscripts that give some advanced knowledge to a certain scientific field. But you are prohibited from publishing any outdated work, the area in which currently a lot of research is already done and we are not looking for any new further progress in that area or a duplication of the work, previously published work or any unacceptable conclusions, all these things we cannot publish. So you need a very good manuscript which is presented very nicely so that it can give or explain the contributions to the scientific community. Okay, here the important thing is that you must know that what to publish and while publishing uh, the work, very essential part is you should have some contribution. You should have some contribution to your uh, a domain, whatever the domain you choose to work and that contribution you are uh, showcasing it. So for showcasing, you must take the background and supporting for that, how it can be done, that will go further. Before you start writing any article, these questions you should ask, ask yourself. Whether uh, the topic that you have chosen is a recent current hot topic, currently research is going on in this particular topic, are you getting any new or interesting results in this area? Are you providing any solution to some difficult problem in this area? And are you ready to publish at this point of time? So if yes, you are in, you have all yes answers to these questions, then you should start preparing your manuscript. Manuscript means your paper. So these four points are very essential that you should understand that what you are going to do. So that is very, very essential. 
what type of article you can publish so there are basically three main types the first is full article full article means generally we write five to six pages paper like two column paper we write and uh, in that we explain the complete method and results with conclusion there is another way also which is called as letters and short communication that you are doing some research in a particular area and you have got very good interesting results and you want to publish them as soon as possible because a lot of work is going on in that area and you want to be the first one to publish the results that you are getting in that in case, that case go for letters. letters or we can have um, uh, it is the case that you don't want to wait to get all the methods completed and then publish it. Whatever few results you are getting, immediately you want to go on publishing it. So for that, we consider these letters or short communications. Then review papers. As I have already explained, review papers is nothing but summary of a complete research uh, area. Like if we consider that wireless sensor network, then what are the different protocols that we use in wireless sensor network for communication? So uh, n number of protocols are there. A lot of work is already done in that. So uh, summarizing all these work together in one paper is nothing but the review paper. These papers are written uh, by very experienced researchers who have done uh, work in that area for uh, a few years and they have published a lot of papers in that area. Those researchers write review papers in that area and these are those are generally invited papers. So basically if we are trying to go the UG undergraduate uh, PG students we are trying to go to publish article generally we go for the full articles that is full length paper. So here the most important thing is you have to understand what you have to write and what will be length of uh, your paper, what will be your contribution. Because somebody says it is very difficult to write a short. So what will be the length of paper? What is your contribution? What is your level of in that technological domain? So accordingly, you can select uh, which type of article or paper you are going to write. So once you select uh, the uh, type of article you want to write, you need to understand the requirement, what editors are going to look into your manuscript, what they are searching for in any manuscript or in a paper. They first of all want quality papers, which are well planned, well executed, well presented papers should be there. Secondly, it should give a significance and originality. That means whatever work you have done in a particular area, it should be applicable to cer certain applications and it should give advantage in those applications. Plus, it will be some original work. It is not duplication of any other work. It should be consistent with the scope of the journal. Every journal defines its own aims and scope. That is the boundary of the topic or the uh, expectations uh, from the researcher that in this particular area, on this topic, only the papers will be accepted in this journal and they will be published because our readers are looking for these topics or this area only. So like that every journal has its scope and within that scope only, they will be accepting manuscripts demonstrated broad interest to readership. So we need to understand who are the customers or who are the readers here for that, uh, the research work you have done. And accordingly, you need to select the journal. Will it cite? Cite is nothing but the work which you are publishing, that work is used by some other researcher in his or her research work. So whenever we write a manuscript, we consider some reference papers. So when we consider reference paper for our manuscript, we cite those papers in our manuscript in introduction or uh, as a literature survey, or we cite it in result to validate our result with other researcher. So that is nothing but citation. So whenever editor receives any manuscript, editor will try to find out whether this work 
is applicable for a certain area and whether the readers or the other researchers are interested in the, this work or not whether they will use this work as reference work for future study or not they will try to find out this so will this work will be cited by other researchers that is also considered well written story your complete manuscript should be written very in a simple manner like a story that these are the uh, problems previously faced by the researchers these are the gaps identified to overcome these gaps i have considered this method or this approach that i am going to introduce newly here and with this new approach i am getting this uh, advanced results so why we are getting these advanced results and what are its applications so like this there should be a complete story in your manuscript and obviously author enthusiasm so all these things are actually required by a editor in manuscript so it is very essential to know your audience to whom you are giving your paper so this you will get from the description of the journal or the uh, whatever the conference is mentioned they are uh, showing the scope and the most important thing is continuity in the paper the storytelling the story writing what the other people have done and what is your contribution so highlighting your contribution is an essential part if you are able to highlight it in properly because writing is an art and if you will utilize it properly if you will rewrite it and understand and learn the things then you can write in a better and better way so we have decided that we want to write a full length manuscript we have understood the editor's requirement and now we start writing our manuscript the first mistake done by everybody while writing a manuscript is everybody starts with abstract don't start with abstract because abstract is nothing but the summary of your entire paper so first of all you need to complete the remaining part of the paper at the end you are going to write the abstract summarizing what you have already compiled so always when we start writing a manuscript we start with our results our figures our tables then explanation of those figures result figures what you are getting and result tables what you are getting explanation of the, that that means the discussion part of the results so first of all we will come accumulate all our figures and tables we will discuss those results in results and discussion and we will explain the methods by which you have got those results and discussion so that is your work that you should highlight first and hence you should start writing your manuscript always with your work so first of all compile all the results together explain the results properly and then explain the methods by which you have got those results after that you will explain conclusion you will write conclusion because in conclusion you have to claim what you have achieved and you have to claim that this is a better result than the other researchers who have worked in this area so you will write the conclusion and after conclusion you will go for introduction because introduction is uh, nothing but a literature survey what other researchers have done you have to identify gap what they have not done what can be done further that is nothing but introduction and at the end you will write abstract and title because abstract is summary of all these things which you are going to write in manuscript so at the end we will write abstract and then we will consider a crisp title for that so the paper whatever your content are by forget into this subtitle so to understand all this subtitle that is essential and when you have to start writing which one so initially if you will write the content according to your flow whatever it is available and then a uh, methodology and uh, whatever the result discussions you want to mention and then you can write uh, what is the background that is introduction and the conclusion and after doing this you can uh, uh, if your title indicate that uh title is a very short 
abstract, we require around 150 words to 250 words. It depends for the general, around it is 150 words. So in that, try, uh, your abstract is a trailer for your paper. As there is an advertisement trailer for various uh, things, so accordingly, abstract is there. It should indicate the content of your paper and it should be interesting to make it interesting so that when you will write the complete paper and uh, at the end, you can write your abstract. And the title uh, you can write after writing your complete paper so that you can appropriately mention that what are the contents in the, your paper. So you understood in which flow we are going to write the manuscript. But now in this flow, when you are writing it, you have to make it very attractive also, so that the editors, reviewers will find it attractive, readable, and readers also will find it attractive and readable. And for that, we need to consider a title, which is very brief and interesting. Because we have seen that for some papers, very big titles are there. And if big title is there in one read, we cannot understand what is exactly uh, mentioned in this particular paper. And for that, we now have to read that title twice or thrice. So we don't want it. We want very crisp and uh, accurate title. Uh, secondly, abstract. Abstract, as I, I have already explained, that it is a summary of the entire paper. So when you start writing abstract, you need to ask yourself four questions. First question is why? Why you are doing this research? That previous researchers have got these uh, parameter values or they have got this output, they have got these results in that these are the gaps identified. And to overcome these gaps, you are doing this research. So your motivation should be mentioned in first two lines of the abstract. Why you are doing this? These are the gaps identified to overcome these gaps. You are going to write this manuscript or you are uh, going to do this research. Then how? How means how you are going to overcome the gap. So are you going to modify a method? Are you going to modify a fabrication process? Are you going to uh, write a new algorithm? So how exactly you are going to overcome the gap that you need to explain in one to two lines. Once you use that new method, what results you will be getting? So what results you are getting in this research that you will explain. So the exact number results in the result section, what you have put because you already written the result part. So whatever numbers you are getting there, that numbers you have to write here. What is the output value for the parameter? Which, you are, uh, which is under consideration, you are getting, write those values. So what results you have got. And once you have got these results, by, uh, where it is applicable, this enhancement in the result, where it is beneficial, for which application you can use this, uh, your research work, so that it will be beneficial there. So its implications. So you have to mention applications also for this, uh, this research work for these results where you can use these methods. And secondly, if anything is remaining, that means some more advancement is possible, then you can mention it is as a future scope in one line in abstract itself. So in abstract, first of all, you explain your motivation. That means there are some gaps identified. Then you have to explain what methods you'll be using to overcome that, that gaps. Then with those methods, what results you are getting and how these results are beneficial in a particular application. And if you can go further, what can be the future scope? What can be the future advancement done to this particular work? So like this, your abstract should be uh, like a story uh, and summary of your entire paper. Then after abstract, we go to introduction. Introduction is actually the work done by other researchers in this area. So generally what we have seen that people will just copy and paste the work done by other researchers from their paper in their own manuscript. And then you get the plagiarism content very high. 
what we are supposed to do here is we just in one or two lines are supposed to explain that this particular researcher has used this method and hence they are getting this result. Then the next researcher after some years have used this method and hence they are getting this result. So like that step by step, year by year, the who, what, who are the researchers, which method they have used and what results they have got, you have to just list it down as a part of introduction. When you keep on listing it down, somewhere you will come to know that in the recent paper, this is the final method they have used and they are getting this final result, but there is still a gap, there is still a scope that we can increase this parameter value or we can change the output, we can get better results. So you, at the end of the introduction, you need to mention that gap that you have identified in the research work of the previous researchers and the identified gap that you are going to address here in this paper. So the introduction last part should be always what, should be always what is the gap identified and how you will try to overcome that. So this is how the introduction should flow from first work done under this topic, under this area to the recent work. And in these, all these works, what is the gap still available and how you are trying to overcome that gap. So this is how introduction should be planned. Then comes your, your methods that you are going to propose. So if it is a math mathematical modeling, then mathematical equation, uh, explanation of each and every keyword you are using there, a uh, variable you are using there, how each and every equation is going to contribute to your work to get the results that you need to explain systematically. If you are uh, using any different fabrication process, if you are adding any new process in the uh, existing fabrication process, so that you need to explain properly and what is your contribution that you need to explain it here. So like that, your complete method to achieve that result that you should explain. Then the results. In results, we have our figures that is graphs and we have tables which indicate values for of different parameters. So always when you explain the result, you explain that for this particular parameter value increases there uh, due to this reason or there is a decrease in the, uh, due to this reason. So the reason uh, by uh, reason due to which you are getting any enhancement in the result that should be explained here in the results and discussion. You are not going to just uh, write there that with this graph, I'm getting increase in the output with this graph, I'm getting reduction in this parameter value. No, why you are getting that increase in the parameter value, why you are getting decrease in that value and why it is significant here how it is relevant to your aim, how it is relevant to overcoming the gap that you have identified that you need to explain in result and discussion because that part is going to give weightage to your actual manuscript. Why this particular result is achieved by your proposed method. That explanation is required here in result and discussion. And at the end, we write conclusion. In conclusion, we are going to claim that whatever I have um, explained here or uh, whatever method I have used with that, I have got superior results that we are going to claim. We are going to validate that with other researchers value. So that conclusion should explain your claim and your results and how it will be beneficial in a particular application. So that should be explained in the conclusion. And at the end, you can write future scope that still some advancement is possible and uh, we can go for better results in future scope. If you are a very first time writer, so you may think that it is very difficult to uh, accommodate all these things because every thing is very specific and very particular. But it doesn't come uh, in a very first time. If you will write a paper first time, it may uh, you may need some iterations and improvement. If you will think uh, on this parameter that how I should improve my result, 
how I should improve my methodology, how I can write my abstract. Uh, because in abstract, there are so many things and the, there are limited words for writing abstract. So uh, repeatedly, if you will think on it, very first, don't restrict yourself in writing uh, only to this parameter. You can uh, write a rough draft and writing a rough draft, uh, you can identify, segregate them that uh, this content I have to segregate to what, whether it is a result or a methodology, whether it is uh, a future scope. So accordingly, you can segregate an understanding and then you can uh, bifurcate it. So this is what you can say, consider a method of improvement of your own uh, manuscript, what you have written. So as sir said, uh, you will write your rough draft first, then you will have your own revisions of that manuscript. And you feel that now you are ready to publish that manuscript. But before going for actual publication, first of all, give that manuscript to your colleague or to your friend for a critical review. Because it is not necessary that colleague or friend is doing research in the same area. They can be from another domain also. But what happens is they will read your manuscript as a story and they will try to link every section with the next section. And they may point out that while reading this story, I'm finding that there is no linkage between uh, this point and this point. There is no linkage from this sentence to this sentence. This, uh, this is coming abruptly here in this manuscript. So like that, you will get a critical review from a person who is not actually from that domain so that if you have any assumptions that, okay, this point will be well understood by others, you will get feedback from your friends or from your colleagues. So that feedback is really very important. Once you get that feedback, try to modify your manuscript accordingly, and then you try to submit that manuscript. Then we can say that your manuscript is ready for submission. By this slide, we want to mention here that the discussion is a very important part of the research or the paper writing. So here, discussion with your fellow colleague is the essential part. And unfortunately, it is the lagging where, where we people are lagging. So the discussion, by the discussion, we can understand so many things. If we are able to explain that what uh, for I, uh, I wrote this, what is the intention of this? Then our clarity and that topic uh, will improve more as well as uh, by the suggestion of our peers, uh, we can uh, do the writing in a more better way. And obviously your quality of paper will improve and you can go for the uh, 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 higher level of the paper publication. What are those that also we will cover. So now we consider that our manuscript is ready after so many revisions, after getting reviews from our friends and colleagues, and now we want to publish it. Now for that, we need to understand what are the different types of journals available, where we want to publish. So first is scholarly and research journals are there, professional trade and industry journals are there, popular and news magazines are there. So when we are in technology, we want to a published paper in technology field, we generally go for scholarly and research journals. Now, under these scholarly and research journals, how we segregate journals or how we evaluate journal, which journal is good, which journal is not good. So how we can say good means what? So which journal have more weightage? So how to find out that? For that, we have different journal evaluation tools. The first one is journal citation report, which we calculate using impact factor. Then web of science, H index, Scopus, again, it gives H index and SCI, uh, SCI uh, Mego journal and country rank that is SJR. So these are the different evaluation tools by which we are going to segregate the journals and we can find out what is the weightage of that particular journal. So this impact factor word you have heard many times. So what do you mean by this impact factor? 
the meaning of the impact factor is it is a measure of how frequently papers published in a journal are cited in other scientific literature how frequently how many times the papers published here in this particular journal are cited by other researchers are used as preference papers by other researchers so how many times other researchers are using papers in this journal decides or gives the weightage to that journal more the uh, researchers using papers from this journal more weightage is there to this uh, journal so impact factor is going to be high like if we consider that uh, there were an average of 1000 citations in 2007 For hundred articles published in that journal, then the impact factor will be thousand divided by ten. That is ten. Thousand so, 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 divided by hundred. That is ten. So like this, how how many papers from that journal are used by other researchers for their work is going to decide the weightage for that journal. Mostly the impact factors are below two, but the journals will impact factor above four. are regarded as very high quality journals and those about 10 are considered as stellar so for example the nature journal has impact factor of 28 3 has 12 uh, journal of applied ecology has 4.5 environmental and resource economics has impact factor of 0.9 so these numbers 28 12 4.5 0.9 give us as the weightage of that particular journal high weightage means more number of uh researchers are using papers in that particular journal more are interested in papers uh, published in that particular journal so this is how we consider the impact factor and weightage of the journal so impact factor is calculated using this formula number of citations divided by total number of articles it is calculated either over past 2 years or it is calculated for past 5 years based on the impact factor these journals can use quartile position of the title in category q1 q2 q3 and q4 like q1 has the list of journals uh, having very high impact factor highest impact factor and q4 will consist of the list of journals which has lower impact factors so like this these depending on the impact factor the journals are divided into four categories q1 q2 q3 and q4 so based on uh, the quality if you want to go for the quality so you have to understand the assessment of the quality on what parameter we do the assessment so one of the parameter is the impact factor it is not the only parameter because sometimes we consider only one parameter and not considering other parameter it is possible that some reputed ieee journal may have the low low impact factor because it is working in a narrow domain and some wide domain journal having the greater impact factor so that may be possible so this is what one of the parameter that you have to consider and don't consider this is the only parameter so how we are going to search for this copus index journal or ugc care journal one important thing is uh, whenever you want to search for the journal go for copus index or ugc care journal there is a list available i will tell you how to search for that list and from from that list how can you consider q1 q2 q3 and q4 uh, category journals uh, but uh, it happens that once you start publishing your papers uh in database your name is there as a researcher in a particular domain and then you get a lot of uh, mails from many journals indicating that currently we are uh, going to publish in this particular area so if you have a manuscript please uh, submit it in our journal and we will uh, publish it within two months or three months like that so whether that journal is authentic journal or, or not whether it has some weightage or not that we need to find out by finding its name in either in scopus index journals or ugc care journal so we need to make it confirm that it is a part of a 
identified journal or recognized journal uh, either it is a scopus index one or it is from the list of ugc care and then only submit your manuscript there okay so how to go for scopus index or ugc care journal so here mainly uh, these are two citation index we are going to understand so ugc care we are uh, the educational institute so main regulating body is the ugc accrediting body so that's why ugc has made a list depend upon the category and that list of the good quality journal is called ugc care so that is ugc care list it goes on updating uh, i think twice a year and you can go to the ugc website and you can find it out madam will explain you how to go for that so both the list that you can verify so ugc care is uh, the list that the journal must be there and scopus index is considered for the quality of the journal okay so just uh, in google just type the scopus index journals and the first site you get is the official scopus site so go to this madam you have to re share the yes so when we go on that particular uh, site we get it like this so here you can give your subject area so you can either search by title publisher or issn number or you can mention a research area here like you have multiple options here so based on your criteria you can consider one of the research area here so we are in tech computer science related uh, research area or we can consider electronics and economics is there engineering related so we can go for electrical and electronics engineering support so it will consider all the journals related to uh, in electrical and electronics engineering but now you can see that the impact factor is 62.1 it is starting from that which comes under a q1 category so either uh, you can segregate them using the q1 q2 q3 and q4 also so if you consider only q1 so whatever is there under q1 all the journals will appear here so now your search has reduced to 204 results only okay like that you can narrow down your search here using these different categories and you can then go through this complete list and find out uh, what which journals are suitable to your research domain okay so if you are doing research in nanotechnology suppose i will consider this particular journal then consider this journal it is scopus index its issn number its subject area which all uh, domain papers can be accepted here everything is mentioned here and then go to the site of that particular journal where you will get aims and scope scope of that particular journal what is the uh, reader profile of that journal that you will understand so like this you have to shortlist some two three journals so this is about scopus index journal now i will uh show you the ugc care list also so i just typed here ugc care list journals so we are getting this first which is uh, from pune university one more site is there which is the actual ugc site okay so here we can go
Jessen. So when you will uh, go for the quality journal, so you must know that uh, what way you can search. So that's why Madam is trying to find it out that and give you the hands on that, how you can search. Because here, if you will do the Google search, there are multiple things. So we should get the data appropriate on, on the appropriate website. And what are the authenticate website that will give you the correct data? Uh, while understanding all this, we must uh, know that what is the <clears throat> quality of our paper. So what are the requirements in that specific journal as Madam has shown you one example. So in that specific journal, what are the requirements, what are the criteria? Or you can go and just see the previous paper of that particular journal so that you can get an idea of the quality of that journal and whatever the manuscript you are planning or you have prepared, whether it is matching with the requirement of that particular journal that you can understand. So here I have got this UGC approved care list of journals for science. You can get here a uh, group one, group two. So here group one have started. So alphabetically you will get the list or if you don't want to go through the entire list you can go for like this scopus index ugc care list of journals or web science so if we go here directly we go to that list here we have total 59 journals so your search will reduce to 59 journals only so like that you will get the list of journals either in scopus indexed site or in UGC care site and whatever journal you want to select just check whether it is listed in these two list or not then only we can say that they are the authentic journals or IEEE site so if they are listed in all these three then only we consider that as the authentic journal and then only go for a manuscript submission okay Okay, now you have shortlisted using this list, you have shortlisted two to three journals that okay, that you can feel that the scope of those journals is relevant to the research area in which you are doing research, in which you have got results, in which you have written the manuscript. So after that, you have to narrow it down to one single journal because at a time we can submit only in one journal, simultaneous submissions are prohibited. So either that journal is recommended by your peers, uh, your colleagues, or you have to consider following criteria to narrow down your search to one single journal. So what is that criteria? First, you need to consider what is the aim and scope of that journal. It should be very much relevant to the manuscript area, uh, in to the your research area in which you have done research. The types of articles considered here, uh, what other researchers have already published in this uh, journal that you need to consider to or align to the research you are doing that you need to find out. Readership, that means the uh, readers who are reading the articles from this journal are academic readers or industry readers that we need to find out. Then subscription, open open access, that means for 
this journal if i want to read the articles from this journal the user needs a subscription the reader needs a subscription or all the articles are open access here in this journal open access means anybody can open that particular uh, article or manuscript and read that or use it as a reference for their research work so that is open access the advantage of open access is you reach to a, a bigger audience a wide range of audience and hence the citation that you get because of the open access journal is more the speed of publication uh, in every journal site they have a, they claim that we publish this particular uh, manuscript within 6 months or within 8 months so the period is generally mentioned there so we need to consider that period also because the work you are doing the research work um it is a very time bounded work uh, if it is not published immediately within 2 to 3 months gap then uh, any other researcher who is also working in this area may publish the similar type of results and then your results will not be accepted by any journal it will be considered as duplication of work and hence the this period the publication period is also very important that also you need to consider when you uh, uh, select one single journal for publication and what is the peer review process that means again uh, if we want to consider this uh, one single journal we have to consider whether it is peer reviewed journal or not peer reviewed journal means whatever manuscript are received by that journal the editors will send those manuscript to all the researchers who are already working in this area and who has already published papers in this area those researchers will read your manuscript and they will find out whether this research work in this manuscript is relevant to what is going on currently in this domain if it is contributing to the work going on in this domain and then they give their comments so this is nothing but a peer review process and this the publications in peer reviewed journal have more weightage compared to other type of publication and hence we have to consider whether the journal that uh, that is under consideration is peer reviewed journal or not who is the audience of that what is the average time to print and what is the impact factor of that journal so these are the four criteria we can consider and we can narrow down to one single journal for publication the main care that we have to take in that some of the journal they just mention that we will publish your work in a very short time so uh, please be uh, aware about this and just verify whether these are the genuine journal or not the peer reviewed is the basic minimum criteria uh, just uh, as per the guidelines of the ugc and other uh, so peer reviewed there every journal must be the peer reviewed journal if it is not a peer reviewed journal then do not submit your manuscript to that particular journal once you consider one single journal you have decided that i am going to uh, publish my manuscript in this journal go to the site website of that journal on the website you will get this guide for authors this guide for authors will give you the complete format in which your manuscript should be there what should be the font what should be the uh, means what should be the size of your figures and tables everything is mentioned here in guide for authors uh, for mostly for every journal they have their own choices of this format so before uh, selecting a journal don't uh, put much time for the for formatting of your paper because as per the journal requirements again you have to do the formatting and for every journal the formatting the uh, format for that writing is totally different so always do that final formatting after you decide on the journals after you go through this guide for authors 
So this consists of the complete formatting information. Plus it uh, consists of about, uh, plus it gives you idea about the copyright uh, policies, uh, whether it is open access or uh, paid, or uh, if, whether it is free for the author or author has to pay to publish in this particular journal. So all this information is given here in guide for authors. So you have to go through that thoroughly depending uh, whatever information is given there the format is given there Adge uh, adjust your or format your complete manuscript as per their requirements and then your manuscript is ready to be submitted for that journal for submission also in every journal in this guide for authors they give you a link uh, on which you will go and submit the uh, paper so you have to go to that link then there are again four or five steps in which they will get a blind manuscript without the author name, author name separately. Then they, you have to upload your figures also with precise format and with precision uh, that you have to upload. You have to upload your table separately. So there are different steps. Step by step, they explain it what we are supposed to do. We have to complete those steps and then only your manuscript is completely uploaded or submitted to that particular journal to avoid the error or to avoid the misunderstanding uh, about the journal so we have to read very carefully whatever the guidelines are given for the author and by this we will understand that what is expected and what are the content of our main script if they are matching then yes it is the proper journal for your publication so once you have submitted your manuscript, this is the process. Author will submit the manuscript, submit a paper. That manuscript will be checked for basic requirements of that particular journal are met or not. That means first of all, whether the submitted manuscript is within the scope of that journal or not. That will be checked. If it is not within the scope, then it will be directly rejected. If it is within the scope, they will assign the reviewers and it will uh, your manuscript will go to the reviewers. Reviewers will go through your entire manuscript and they will give the recommendations. The editors will collect those recommendations and based on the recommendations, the decision is made. If the recommendation suggests that this is a duplication of the work or this work uh, is not giving any weightage in this domain, in this area, in that case, the work is or the, the work is incomplete, something like that, then the uh, manuscript is rejected. But if the recommendations are that some enhancement uh, can be done and this work can be published, so like that. Uh, recommendations are received from reviewer, then the editors will give that paper for revision to the author. So author will be asked to revise the manuscript again as per the recommendations from the reviewers. So this author will again revise this manuscript and they will submit the paper again. Again, it will go through the entire process. After revision, if the uh, reviewers give very good recommendation for that paper that yes, now after revision, this paper is acceptable. We can use, uh, publish this paper in this journal. If that kind of comments are received, in that case, the paper is accepted. So this is the complete process that you start from why you want to publish, what you want to publish, Till final, your paper is accepted by the journal for publication. If you want to publish per journal in a paper manuscript in a good quality journal, then please be ready that uh, you should uh, go for the multiple time of the revision. Because uh, uh, if the manuscript is not ready or not matching the quality of the required um, quality of the journal, they give the multiple uh, review, multiple revisions. And uh, according to the review, we have to do the revision. So it is a time consuming process. It requires patience and it requires a continuous 
communication and the modification in your manuscript. Then and then we can have a quality publication. Okay. Now you have published a number of papers. How you can find out how much contribution you have given to the scientific community with your publications? So to find out that, uh, we can create a Google Scholar profile or ORCID account on which you can put all your publications and then there you can get index which will indicate how many citations are there for your publication which will give how much weightage is there for your publication in the scientific community. So Google Scholar account, what are the advantages here? It collect your work in one place for other researchers to find, track citations of your work automatically, show up as the first result in the searches for your name and allow users to follow you and receive notifications of your new publications. So once user will get this notification, they will review, they uh, go through your new publication, they will read it. And if uh, they at all feel that yes, they can use that uh, work in their research, then it will be cited. So it is a quick way of reaching to the audience uh, for your research work. Then we have ORCID number also that is a unique number given to every researcher. You have to apply for that. You will get one ORCID number. Many times when you submit your manuscript in the journal, you submit that manuscript with uh, help of this ORCID number. So it gets, uh, whenever it is published, it gets automatically linked to the ORCID number. So we call it as creating online CV. Plus it has some additional advantages like it differentiate yourself from other researchers with the same or similar names because this is a unique ID given to every researcher and it collect works published under different names. It provide your ORCID ID to funders and publishers when required. So these are the additional advantages we get with ORCID number. So we can have these two Google Scholar account profile and ORCID account that is ORCID number which can keep the list of your uh, publications. Uh, it will be very handy for the readers in that domain to go through the list and uh, it will be a quick way to reach to your audience and it will at the same at the same time it will also uh, help you to track the citations for your research work so what citation uh, uh, parameters we get with the google scholar the first one is i10 index this value we get here i10 index is nothing but the number of publications with at least 10 citations how many publications has got at least 10 citations? That number is nothing but the item index. So this will give some weightage to your uh, publications. This is very simple measure and the advantages are very uh, simple, straightforward to calculate. And my citations in Google Scholar is free and easy to use. The disadvantage it is used only in Google Scholar. So what other index we can use is, we can use H index also. So H index is also the measure of performance of an individual researcher as a citation rate for uh, publication of publications. So it is based on the number of publications and number of citations. So on the similar way, H index is 10. If 10 publications of a researcher are cited 10 times, then H index value is 10. Now this H index we can get either from Web of Science or for your work or from Google Scholar profile you can get your H index or from Publish or Parish on this site you can get your H index. On this site if you put all your publications then you can get H index also, G index, M index. So these are various measures or metrics uh, by which your value, your contribution in the uh, research community in that domain uh, is uh, considered or that much weightage we can consider for your uh, publication. So we need to important this, uh, uh, we need to remember these important points. First of all, preparation is very important for the manuscript 
but do not spend too much time only on the preparations submit to the right journal when you are selecting the journal what is the scope of the journal that is very important criteria plus what is the impact factor or prestige of that journal how well known that journal is that you need to consider submit to one journal only at a time check the english because there are many journals which are uk based journals they are very keen on your language in the manuscript so mostly whenever in the journal you get that guide for authors there they mention some sites uh, on which you can submit your manuscript and get your uh, grammar checked or get your uh, language checked so you can use that also to um, use proper language for your manuscript pay attention to structure as i have explained your structure should be telling your manuscript should be telling a story that this is the gap and this is the method and with this method these are the results why this enhancement in the result is observed and how the gap is overcome so like that there should be a continuous flow like a story so structure is really very important and should be presentable also pay attention to journal requirements and be honest so all the best to all the students who want to the best to you for your uh, quality publications thank you so here you have mentioned that what are the ways that you can understand where you stand and uh, uh, how you can uh, consider your contribution now we are open for the question and answer if uh, uh, there is any uh, to the best of our capacity we will try to answer uh, if you have any question then you can raise a hand and ask your question or you can put your question in the chat box also we have given a feedback link so it is essential the mainly the student if you are interested but uh, that we should uh, inform about your attendance to your uh, department and uh, the aict 100 hours activity point 100 point activity uh, that uh, you should get a wetage so it is very very essential for you to fill up the feedback link otherwise we will not be able to provide the data to your respective department so is there any question okay so i'll share a general question that uh, what uh, maybe yesterday or today i got by some faculty they are just asking that uh, how i can select a journal for my domain so as here we have mentioned the two index generally we have considered the scopus index and the ugc care list so by this you can select your domain because it is for the entire community research community so you can select that and accordingly you can find it out that which journal is for your publication then uh, uh, with reference to the uh, copyright uh, we are giving a copyright uh, to the journals the manuscript what you are submitting you have to sign a copyright form uh, a, which is given by the journal and then copyright you have to give it to the journal it is the general procedure what is required okay so if there is no question then uh, ashwini madam you can conclude yes sir so with this we conclude uh, today's webinar so i thank all the attendees for being with us today and uh, making this program a success so thank you everyone have a wonderful evening once again i remind that if you are interested for uh, so your attendance so feedback you have to submit the feedback it is very very essential thank you all of you for attending tumse koi bahu yaar third year wale well just end the meeting